my spectators and my dear brothers and sisters. I welcome all of you with the Islamic greetings. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May the peace, mercy, and blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of Almighty God, be upon all of you. In the Quran, Allah says, Say, He's Allah, the one and only. Keep in mind, we must abide the Quran. We have to embody Islam. We should stand for the truth. We should convey the message of Islam. This is the deen from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The last and final instructional manual for us human beings. It is the glorious Quran. It is the glorious Quran. A warm-hearted and honest girl of eight, Fatima Kodia enjoys impersonating prominent orators on Islam and learning from their speeches. She has delivered public talks at the young age of four. Alhamdulillah, her hobbies include reading, painting, watching Islamic programs, and skating. And what she does the best, presenting lectures on Islam. Fatima's ambition is to teach Islam thus being instrumental in spreading the word of Allah. The first thing that Satan will try to do is get you to stop praying. You know why? Because he has to kill, destroy your God and if he wants to penetrate the castle. Once this is done, the God is weakened and then the shaitan can open the floodgates of evil and storm into the fortress. We need to beware of the clutches of the evil one. I now invite Sister Fatima Kodia to present her talk, Traps of Satan. Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam, ala rasulillah, wa ala alihi wa ashabihi, ajma'in. Amma ba'd, fa'uzu billahi minna shaitan al-rajim, bismillahi rahman rahim إِنَّ الشَّيْطَانَ لَكُمْ عَدُومُ فَاتَّخِذُوا عَدُوَا رَبِّ شْرَحْ لِي صَدْرِي وَأَسِّلْ لِي عُمْرِي وَحْلُ الْأُقْدَةً بِاللِّسَانِ يَفْقَوْ كَوْلِي My respected elders and my dear brothers and sisters, I welcome all of you with the Islamic greetings. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May peace, mercy, and blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be upon all of you. The topic of my talk is Traps of Satan. In one of the greatest verses of the Quran, in Surah Fatih, chapter 35, verse 6, the verse that I recite in the beginning of my talk, Allah informs us, Inna shaytana lakum aduwu, aduwa. Surely Satan is an enemy to you. So take him and treat him as an enemy. Very short, yet full of meanings. Allah tells us that he is our enemy number one. The shaitan is the devil. You can call him by any name you wish. He is our enemy. Allah is telling us that he is our enemy number one. The second command from Allah is we must take him as our enemy. Now, in order for us to take him as an enemy, to treat him as an enemy, Rule number one, you must know your enemy. Otherwise, there's so many people around us. And if you cannot identify your enemy, if you cannot describe him, if you do not know his characteristics, we fail to identify him. So, you must know the characteristics and the description of our enemy. And not only that, we also have to implement this because by implementing, we are actually taking a shield from this shaitan. First, a lot of Muslims got confused. We have jinns, we have shaitan, we have iblis, we have shaitin. So what is this actually? Well, it is very simple. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us and mentioned in Surah Rahman, chapter number 55, verse number 15, wherein Allah informs us, وَخَلَقَ الْجَانَّ he created the jinns from fire, free of smoke. So we believe that we have human beings as a species. There's another species called the jinns and Iblis. He is the father of all shayateen. He was raised up in status to be with the other angels. And he was the one who disobeyed Allah's command and refused to prostrate to Adam. While all the other angels did so. 
in their obedience to Allah Azza wa Jal. Now the jinn themselves are like us humans in regards to belief. They are believers and they are disbelievers. However, the disbelievers are not identified by the name jinn. They are called shayateen. The Arabic shayateen is the plural of shaitan. That means that the one who tries the best to make you come out of the loop of Islam. As Allah mentioned in Surah Fatir, chapter 35, verse 6. Inna ma yadru hizbahu liyakunu min ashabi sahir. He only invites his adherents that they may become his companions of the blazing fire. Now we know about shaitan and his unlimited plans. Let us understand few traps which he lays for us in our life so that we fall prey to him and ultimately become one of his adherents which Allah has warned us. Trap number one. The shaitan eats and drinks with us. How is that? It is mentioned in Sahih Muslim, Volume 5, The Book of Drinks, Hadith number 5262-5267. That if you begin to eat and you do not say Bismillah in the name of Allah, then he will eat with you. And if you drink, but you do not say Bismillah, then he will drink with you. But if you say Bismillah, but you use your left hand in eating and drinking, then he will share the food with you. The jinn themselves are like us humans in regards to belief. They are believers and they are disbelievers. However, the disbelievers are not identified by the name jinn. They are called shayateen. The Arabic shayateen is the plural of shaitan. That means that the one who tries the best to make you come out of the loop of Islam. As Allah mentioned in Surah Fatir, chapter 35, verse 6. إِنَّمَا يَدْرُوا هِزْبَهُ لِيَكُونُوا مِنْ أَصْحَابِ السَّهِيرِ He only invites his adherents that they may become his companions of the blazing fire. Now we know about shaitan and his unlimited plans. Let us understand few traps which he lays for us in our life so that we fall prey to him and ultimately become one of his adherents which Allah has warned us. Trap number one. The shaitan eats and drinks with us. How is that? It is mentioned in Sahih Muslim, Volume 5, The Book of Drinks, Hadith number 5262-5267. That if you begin to eat and you do not say Bismillah in the name of Allah, then he will eat with you. And if you drink, but you do not say Bismillah, then he will drink with you. But if you say Bismillah, but you use your left hand in eating and drinking, then he will share the food with you. Trap number two. The shaitan also sleeps over in our house. When? It is mentioned in Sahih Muslim, Volume 5, The Book of Drinks, Hadith number 5262. When you enter the house by not saying Bismillah, then he will come and call all of his companions and say, Come, come, we have gotten a shelter for tonight to spend in. But if you enter the house and you close the door by saying Bismillah, then we will not be able to open the door. Trap number three. The shaitan, as the Prophet tells us that he uses us as public toilets. A'uzu billah, the most impure substance on earth, the most impure entity on earth, is shaitan. And there is no doubt. As the Prophet وسلم, and his companions saw a man, and the companions pointed out to the Prophet وسلم, and said, O Prophet of Allah, this man did not pray Fajr. A man did not pray Fajr until it was daytime. The Prophet ﷺ said, This is a man who the devil urinated in his ears. A'uzu billah, I seek refuge in Allah. The most filthiest thing in a person is his urine. And the most filthiest thing of all creation is shaitan. And he urinates in the ears of the people who do not pray Fajr before sunrise. How many Muslims? 1.6 or 1.7 billion around the world. How many of them pray Fajr on time? How many of them pray Fajr in the masjid, in the first row? One would say, okay, every day I wake up, I do this and nothing comes out. So I'm cool. No, you are not. Because you are unable to see his urine. 
but it is affecting you without your knowledge and it is corrupting your heart and it is corrupting your body and it is disabling you from listening to the Quran and understanding it and from listening to the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Trap number four. Another one and his name is Kinzab. As the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam mentioned in an authentic hadith of Sahih Muslim volume six, the book of greetings, the hadith number 5738, that his job is to whisper to you when you are in prayer. The minute he hears the azan, he runs. And the minute the azan stops, he comes back and starts to whisper to you. Mmm, nice carpet. What an awful smell of the man in front of me. His sock stinks. What's the time? Something is itching me. I don't know what it is. The mobile is ringing. My friend is going to call me. So like this, end up to pray, not contemplating, not thinking, not having any form of submissiveness while praying. Why? Because Kinzab was there to guide you throughout the prayer that you cannot understand anything of it. And finally, my dear brothers and sisters, the Prophet ﷺ told us and mentioned it in Sahih al-Bukhari, Volume 3, the Book of Fasting, Hadith number 2038. That the shaitan runs in your bodies like blood flows in our veins. That means he's extremely close to us. Not in a good sense, but like an illness which you cannot get rid of. Like a bad habit which you cannot kick. So he's always there and always be with you. Not to advise you, not to give you something that will benefit you. In this life and the year after. On the contrary, he's trying his best to make you fall into his traps. Hence, to know how the shaitan works, we must avoid his traps and his tricks. And we must abide the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet And we should implement it practically in our lives. And then we'll be safe from him and his plotting will be be and we will be safe from him. As Allah describes in Surah Al-Isra, chapter number 17, Verse number 65. As for my servants, no authority shall you, the shaitan, have over them. Enough is our Lord as for dispose of affairs. Wa akhir da'wana and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. That was an eye-opener. We seek refuge in Allah from the traps of the shaitan.